Hello, Zach Murphy here, and thank you for tuning into my channel here. In this teaching, I titled it a question to ask everybody whether you are a believer in Jesus Christ or not. Where is your treasure at? And we are living in a day and age in where so many people have no idea or have lost touch with the true purpose of life. So many people are busy chasing financial goals to build a huge bank account or to build a big mansion or, you know, to achieve an extreme level of fitness, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, having money or, you know, taking care of your body. But often people get out of balance and that's all they focus on. That is the focal point of their life. That is the foundation of their life. And many people think that the market success is simply what's in your bank account or how big of a name you have for yourself. Um, some people think that being successful means being a millionaire or being the richest person on the face of the earth or being elected to public office or curing a disease. And there's many other things people tie with if someone's successful or not in life. And the real measure of success in life is when you pass from this life on, meaning when you physically die, or if Christ returns, if you hear these words from Jesus Christ, well done, my good and faithful servant, as Jesus said in Matthew 25, 23. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That is all we should be striving for. Well done done my good and faithful sir and we shouldn't be striving all our energy towards building our own kingdom we should be striving our energy towards hearing well done my good and faithful servant living a life fully out for christ and, you know so often people are worried about building their own kingdom on this earth you know building a big name for themselves and some people will just chase money all their life and the bible warns us that the love for money is the root of all evil as we see in first timothy chapter 6 verse 10. and you know it amazes me that people will chase these many things chase these many things that they can possess and one day when they physically die all these things that you own somebody else is going to get them they have no eternal value your bank account your health your physical health and how big or small your family is. None of that has any eternal value. But yet we live in a society where that is what is pushed on people, building your own kingdom. And, you know, we shouldn't be spending all this time worrying about how we're going to pay for this, how we're going to pay for that. You know, it's important that we should practice biblical financial stewardship. And I want to emphasize this because, you know, some people take this out of balance with prosperity versus financial stewardship. You know, I believe that God will provide for us and that we should honor what God gives us financially. So, you know, I think it is wise for every Christian to have a budget um, written down and, you know, just steward our what God has blessed us with. And, you know, there's many principles that go along with financial stewardship and maybe one day I'll do a teaching on that. But we should not be focusing so much on, you know, chasing money or chasing this or that in life. We should be focusing on one thing, and that is our relationship with Christ Jesus. And I want you to listen to this parable that Jesus gave in Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 21. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my crops and my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat and drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool 
to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. And you know, the rich man had so much crops in his parable. He didn't even have enough room for them, and he thought that the solution was to build bigger barns. For his, expand his own kingdom. And you know, this rich man, he thought that he had everything in life figured out. And you know, when his time came to die, physically die, it was said to him, you have all this earthly wealth, but what about your rich relationship with God? That's what really matters. We get so concerned with deadlines, whether it's for school or for work or meeting, you know, all these obligations for our family and all that. I'm not saying that these things don't have a place. Everything in our life as Christians needs to be balanced according to what God's word says. But we have a great tragedy where so many people in the church especially, and I'm saying that this has both people in the church that are genuine believers and also people that are false converts. This goes both ways, where the church is so worldly minded. You know, you think about, you know, things biblically. The people in the Bible, they had a different mindset than what we do today. They're more of Eastern thinkers and we're more of Western thinkers. Too often we don't realize how our Western culture has shaped us and has often influenced how we interpret things biblically. And worldliness, you know, the Apostle Paul warned about not being conformed to the spirit of this age in Romans chapter 12 verse 2, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But when Paul said this, if you think about this, the spirit of worldliness is more sophisticated today, more sophisticated and complicated and more relevant today than what it was back when that was written. Just think of how much society has changed since then. Just look at how much social media has impacted us. You know, people get on social media and then they compare their life to someone else's life on a picture. Um, you know, we should not be conformed to the world. We should not be conformed to thinking that way. And, you know, we need to set our minds on the things of God and cultivate that in our mindset so that our mind is always upon that. And, you know, we have to have a deep desire. We need to cultivate a deep desire to know God's Word, to deeply study God's Word, to worship God both in, you know, your church community and also privately, communion with God, and all these things matter. This is how you build a rich relationship with God. And you're able to do this now without having to go through, you know, the Old Testament priest stuff and sacrificial systems, because right now we're under a new covenant because Jesus Christ sacrificed 2,000 years ago, paid the price for our sins to be forgiven so that we could be placed in right standing with God. And we need to shift our mindset from worldly things to the kingdom of God. You know, if our worldly figures are worldly people that we look up to or esteem highly or nothing but secular people, then I think we really need to take a step back and think. Think about what's priority in our life because, you know, the word of God should be our priority and that should be transforming our minds to like the things that are in line with God's word and to not like the things that go contrary to what God wants. And 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 tells us, But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years like a day. This is so powerful because, and I want to close with this, we often get so worried, as I said in the beginning, we get so worried about all these deadlines and everything, all these various circumstances of life. You know, we think, how are we going to pull through this situation, or what are things going to be like for me financially when I retire? Lists of, you know, things we think about go on and on, the things we worry about as humans. You know, our lifespan on this earth is like a drop of water in the Pacific Ocean when compared to how long eternity is. We have no clue how long eternity is, except from what it says here. A day is like a thousand years of the Lord. 
You know, we need to set our minds on eternity with Christ Jesus. And not worry about these things. Let, you know, what Jesus promised us, the Holy Spirit that will give us peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Because God's word is true. And his promises are true. You can take all God's promises to the bank. And it doesn't matter what you're feeling or what, you know, your circumstances say. It's what God's word says matters. And, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you to examine yourself and see if, as you're living in this world, are your is your mindset mainly the mindset of worldliness, or is it the mindset of the things of God and striving to know God in a deeper way? Because you cannot put a price on our relationship with Jesus Christ. And that is all I have for this teaching. I hope this teaching has blessed you and encouraged you. And I just want to also encourage you to be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And that way you can be notified when I put up new teachings. So be sure to do that and like and share this video. So once again, thank you for watching this video. God bless you and have a great week.